This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Detroit, Michigan. Her name is Callista. I'm doing great. How are you, Ted? Great, great. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Uh, Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Um, I got sent some information from your uh, team. You have a new release that's scheduled to come out the 29th of January. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, coming up so soon. Yeah, are you excited? I'm super excited about this one. There's a lot behind this song, so definitely okay. excited. And this is called Can't Get Enough? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you about all of that because I have a few questions for you. Okay, now. sounds good. Uh, but before we do that, um, as always, for those who don't know Callista, tell us about yourself. So when I was little, um, my family kind of brought back that Detroit roots from our family and they really instilled um, Motown music into me when I was really young. Um, I mean, they would do like their dances in the living room, like, you know, put the couches out to the side and have dances with like Otis Redding. Obviously Stevie Wonder's a big one. Aretha Franklin is like no brainer, Um, but I grew up with that. And then it turned into you know, Casey and the Sunshine Band and started going to 70s, 80s and things like that. And I fell in love with it. Then I heard Lauryn Hill sing and I was like, I want to be her. So I started trying to do these riffs when I was like 12. And um, I got more into singing then. And I performed in schools um, and did events and um, other things like that. And it kind of turned into something bigger um, as I got older. So I'm 21 now but I, I wanted to do something more. I felt like it was bigger than me at this point. I wanted to bring back, I'm not trying to sound cliche because it's bring back soul, but I wanted to bring back some soul, some female strong vocals, that old soul sound, you know, that Etta James-ish type sound, you know, that really strong vocals. So um, and modernize it, I guess I would say. Okay. And so that kind of brought me to this point now. That's a little bit about me, but um, like philanthropy is very huge. It's something that I want to do. That's a big push for me as well. Besides of the passion of music and piano, I've been playing piano for over 12 years. So that's huge too, but music has just been a huge influence on me. And um, that's why I came into that path, so. Okay, now you mentioned uh, earlier that um, your family would sit around and sing and dance. Uh, mm-hmm. Is any of your family, are they in the music business? So none of them are in the music business. Um, Actually, my mom, she sings, but she doesn't let anybody else hear but me and my family, my close family. She's the one that tells me, oh, that doesn't sound very good. You know, you got to change that. So she's the only one that's musically inclined, but we all have a good ear for music, I'd say. We just love to listen to it as a whole. All right. Um, Okay. And you, like I said, you're from Detroit. So I and you mentioned earlier how uh, Motown was an influence. So, I mean, that's kind of, that, that kind of makes sense from being from uh, Detroit. Yes. Um, so you decided early on that this is what you wanted to do. Oh yeah. And especially in this area, the Tri-City area, um, you get a lot of people that are like, oh, you want to be a singer? Oh, like, okay, be a singer. But it's not like just, you know, playing around in the bars, which is totally fine. But some people like do want to go a little bit further and, you know, take it to a different level. I'm going to have a platform with it. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. It's, it's hard in this area sometimes, you know, some people don't think it's big and they think, well, that's too big of a risk, but you kind of have to take that jump, right? So. Okay. Now you mentioned, um, I'm not familiar with uh, Michigan. What is the Tri-City area? What is that? So it's like the Midland, Bay City, Saginaw area. And then there's Auburn too. So that's kind of the area that I'm in. So 
Okay. That's the Tri-City area. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I imagine, like you said, that there are plenty of people who have, who aspire to be uh, singers or entertainers. Yeah. Just because there are so many people who aspire to do that, that perhaps um, people get sort of, you know, kind of lost in the weeds a little bit or. Yeah. So you're kind of saying like there's like a competition factor or there's just so many people trying to do it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, um, especially now because everybody's at this level playing field because of the pandemic. Right. So these really big stars, they can't play out at like Little Caesars Arena in these big places. So everybody's kind of down to this coffee shop, small places if they're open, right? Because right. Michigan's kind of shut down right now. But yes, there are tons of people doing that right now. But it just takes those people that just don't give up, I think. I think that's the only fail is if you give up. But if I you agree. keep going, I think you can do it for sure with anybody. I agree. I agree. Um, now, uh, this new release you have coming out to 29, can't yeah. get enough. Because of the pandemic, uh, was it always scheduled to come out 2021? Or did you guys push it back? Was it supposed to be released earlier or how did that work? So it was supposed to be released earlier. We, we recorded three singles in Tennessee and in Bristol, Tennessee. And so it did get pushed forward um, into January, um, especially because of the holidays. We didn't want to release it at that time, especially because we knew we were putting so much into this song. So the pandemic did was a huge factor in that, but so was the holidays as well. So yeah, pandemic did affect that. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I tell you, I, uh, I had a chance to hear it when your management team yeah. sent it over to me and uh, I thought it was great. Um, you liked, oh, that's such a compliment coming from you. <laughs> I thought it was a, sort of a mix between R&B and pop. Yes. But I think it definitely works. Right. Uh, so, when the 29th comes out, when we'll release this interview, I think people are going to jump all over it. Um, it's, such, it's such a great song. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you are from Detroit. And yes. you mentioned just uh, lightly some of your influences. You said Motown, Aretha, Lauryn Hill. Um, did you pattern your singing style after any one person? Or is it a combination of a few different artists? Yeah, I think it's a combination of a few different artists. Sometimes when I sing, it depends what how I sing or, or what type of song I sing. Like I mentioned earlier, like Lauren Hill, I kind of like learned my riffs off of her, like in the in the Fuji's and things like that. Um, Aretha Franklin, she just has that gut wrenching like soul, like belting. And so that kind of style, you know, could have been taken from her. Christina Aguilera is a big one too. She's more, you know, more of the modern. Um, she's also a big riffer too, and she has kind of that throaty sound sometimes. So I definitely think it's from tons of different artists. Um, Stevie Wonder was a big one though with music style, like how I kind of want to be. That upbeat just makes you happy, just makes you want to groove around type of music. It's kind of what I feel. So yeah, tons of different artists. And you do a lot of writing, I'm assuming as well? Yes, yeah. So I got into writing actually kind of recently so like two years ago really because they said you know you need to start making your own music I was just singing covers at the time and um, you can only make them your own so much so you kind of got to put your own stuff out and I was so nervous about putting out my first one and we actually started off with Chain of Fools like a cover of Chain of Fools so that one was the first one we put out just to be safe um, and pay some homage to her so yeah so okay. for a little bit yeah, I had a chance to hear Chain of Fools, too. And, uh, yeah. So it makes sense that you would sample a, uh, an Aretha uh, yes. classic song. And you did a great job on that, by the way, as well. Thank you. Thank you. We tried to make it like the song Blurred Lines, how it has kind of that funky sound to it. Kind of combine that with her sound, too, but not take away from it at all. Nope. I did not want to do that. And then obviously just sing to it because I love that song. Everybody loves that song. So. Uh, you can't help but to love Aretha. That's right. <laughs> um, now, this new track that you're releasing, is this part of a upcoming EP or an album or is it just, just a single? So it's just a single right now. This one is going to kind of carry us on to the EP. So we're going to be working on an EP in Detroit studios. So Rust Belt Studios. 
and we're going to be working on EP at that time. So this one's more of like the boom, carry over <laughs> into the EP. So no, just a single right now. Okay. And you mentioned earlier, um, Chain of Fools, but you also had a couple other releases too that I saw. Yes. Um, and those seem to be um, um, kind of rock influence. So yes. you, you kind of do, you're versatile. So you do a little bit of rock and R&B yes. and a little pop. Um, I guess that eliminates trying to label you a particular kind of artist. Uh, was that intentional to, to be as broad as possible? Kind of, yes. So we put, so all three singles are like completely different. They're on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Clearly, like you've, you've listened to the one that was very rock influenced, not me. And it was like called not me because it's really not me. That's not my style. But we were inspired by the song Blow by like, Bruno Mars, okay. Ed Sheeran and Chris Stapleton. And we were like, okay, Bruno Mars is on a rock song. And we were like, why can't we do that with like a female? So that's why we did that at Bristol, Tennessee in that studio. And it came out and I was doing things with my voice that I didn't think I could do. And it does show like versatility, like you said, but I'd say like R&B and soul is my main because that's just kind of what my voice sounds like regardless of what style of song. But I like kind of being genreless in a way. I yeah. think a lot of things can be put together. Like pop these days just means popular. It can be anything really. Right. So I kind of like being genreless in that way. But it was more or less to figure out what do people like from me? Do they like more of the rock sound? Do they like more of a ballad? Or this next one, do they like more pop sound? So. Okay. I also hear um, I also hear some jazz in your in your music as well. So yes. yeah, you yeah. got all, now if you throw some country in there, that's what some people say. <laughs> That's like, it seems like that would be the last thing that I put myself into. But um, yeah, yeah, I've heard people say it's kind of rockabilly-ish in a way, a little Carrie Underwood style, but that's okay with me. So, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> now those other releases were released earlier in 2020 or? Yes. So the last one released in 2020 was December 18th. And that was the rock, the rock one. Yep. Okay. So tell me about um, Can't Get Enough. Tell me about that uh, Okay, so that was recorded in Bristol, Tennessee um, with my producer, Matt Smile. And it was the coolest song that ever came about. It was the first song that I ever wrote and it, it stayed the same the whole time, which is really cool. So it was like, what, two years ago I had it. Wow. And there's a really funny story that goes with it, but we knew something was missing when we were recording it. And we were like, man, it'd be kind of cool to have a rapper in here. And we were in Tennessee. So we were like, where's going to be a rapper around here? Like, nobody's going to do that. And his friend was a FedEx driver and he pulls up into the studio and he just sat in on my session. And he was like, I rap. And we were like, no, you don't like, come on. And then he just spit some bars and literally came up with his verse within like 10 minutes. And our jaws were just on the floor. He was in his FedEx outfit. And he was in the studio, you know, missing his packages that he had to deliver because he was recording with us. So um, it all came together really organically and it was just so cool how it turned out. And it's just a fun story to tell. And he really vibed with the song and he's like the spice that gets added to the song. Without him, it wouldn't be what it is. And it gives you that catchy factor. I know some people might be covering his rap in that song and you can just hear it. Okay. And you can feel the magic in the song too, so. Yeah. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. It's, uh, it's very, um, I love it. I thought it was, I thought it was great. And, wow, that's great. Um, can't wait to hear more from you. Um, and speaking of that, um, you mm -hmm. got this coming out on the 29th of this month or yeah, January. Yep. Um, what's the, what's it like going forward? Are you going to produce, is, what's the plan going forward in uh, 2021? Yeah, so lots of big goals. <laughs> but um, first to start off is going to the studio in Detroit 
and getting that EP done, or at least another really good single that we can also use to tie it over if this one doesn't do, you know, what we think it's going to. So we also have a radio campaign behind this one too. So it's a lot of push on this one just to kind of tide people over to that EP. But that's first and foremost, something that I want to do. Hopefully when things open up, that would be really cool if I could play out because now I have my own songs and my own music and hopefully have good enough of a local following that it will be successful just in Michigan. And then going further south might be better too. Okay. That's kind of the reachable goals that I can think of right now okay. as far as like pandemic, you know, holding everything back. Yeah. But that's what I want to do so far. Yeah. Hopefully the, uh, hopefully this year, so. The artists get <laughs> out there and yeah. get back to uh, somewhat of a normal right. existence. I know uh, a lot of yeah. artists are struggling because they can't get out and they can't promote. Um, right. And I just think there's only so much, um, you know, Instagram and Facebook Live stuff you can do. Right, so. right. And I'm lucky I'm in the spot where, like, right now it is recording and doing things like that. I'm not stuck, you know, just playing out is my only thing. So I'm really lucky. And, we've gotten to build the brand a little bit more too. So we've been like grinding as the pandemic has been hitting. So it hasn't stopped us yet, but I really hope it does open up. I miss live shows in general. So yeah, I think we all do. Oh yeah. Um, so your previous work, what type of, um, what type of uh, reception have they gotten from uh, the public and your fans? So really good. I think we did it in the correct order, too, of releasing these three singles. Chain of Fools rele was released last February, so it was a while ago. Um, and that was just kind of the out the gate, like I said, the safe one to do. And then Just Friends was more of a ballad, and it went over really super well. Um, we found out a lot of people liked the slower, more romance songs, you know, something about a love story. A lot of people like that. A lot of women like that. Um, a little bit more and a lot more men like not we're me all stuck, we're all stuck in the house I mean yeah that's right that's right yep and then the next one just had you know that head banging sound like you crank it up in your car and you're just jamming out to it and a lot more men like that song and a lot of women too and it hit a different audience it hit those rock fans that you know, listen to some old blues and stuff like that but they don't listen to R&B and soul music these days necessarily so it was kind of cool seeing that demographic come through. So we're just trying to hit a whole bunch of different people. Or I'm trying to hit a whole wow. bunch of different people. All right. Just to hear good music. That's all. Exactly. And you know what? I always feel like if you're putting out good music, people will find it. Yeah. Uh, and you have a variety of different types of music. So yeah. it's going to garner many fans. Now you're just 21. Are yes, you I just turned 21 in November. How did you... Um, well, first of all, are you an independent artist? Or are you signed to a label? Or? I am. I did have management, but now I am an independent artist right now, as of right now. So. All right. And how did you, how did you um, navigate your way through getting a, uh, getting some, um, or do you, are you signed to uh, like, um, no, uh, not at all. I'm totally, all just on your up. the only team I have is Angelie and Brittany which is really cool. They're an all women's team. And so they are my PR team, which is okay. really cool. And they've helped me so, so much. They're amazing women and, and very, very cool ladies. So I love them. And okay. then I have my friend Casey, who's helping me out too. So my family backs me up. Okay. Um, You've but, done all this without eating nor a sort of major push from a, from a label. Right. Yeah. No record label or anything like that. So, but eventually if that happens and it needs to happen for me to push, then I'm open to it, but right now I'm just going to ride solo for as long as I can. Well, congratulations. Um, Thanks. You're doing it all on your own, staying independent. Oh yeah. Independent. I got my family that if I didn't have my family helping me out, Ooh, I'd be stuck. So yeah. Well, congratulations on, uh, on your success and just getting this far. Yeah. Um, it blows my mind. If I could go back a year ago and see where I am now, like releasing your own music, like your own words, your feelings, it's out there for everybody to hear. I would have, I wouldn't have believed you. So. <laughs> okay. Um, now you said you uh, recorded at least most of your music in uh, Tennessee. Yes. Um, why Tennessee? Is that where the producers were or? So is actually a friend that, a friend that, well, we didn't really know yet. 
and we kind of wanted to meet him. It wasn't even supposed to be a legit recording session. It was just supposed to be, let's mess around and see what we come up with. And it ended up being obviously the three songs that we released. So that turned out really, really good. And he's a really nice guy and obviously very talented. He did the music and not me. He's the one ripping that guitar solo in there. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. He's got some gusto and um, his studio is great too. So it was just a very chill environment. And um, I felt like I could really connect with him and we worked together really, really well. So it just kind of worked out by happenstance. So, okay. So we talked about what's going on, um, you know, this year, hopefully. And now I guess all that depends on how, <laughs> how we do with COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, well, um, let me ask you, you're so young and I don't want to, you know, you're 21. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to insult you. No, you I, never. I, no, 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 never. Okay. Um, what kind of advice would you give um, um, artists who oh, wow. are thinking about following in your footsteps? How would you okay. tell them to, uh, to proceed? Mm. Like a piece of advice. Or like, oh, I've just learned so much. And, and being young has its advantages and has its disadvantages too. Um, a lot of people can take advantage of, you know, you not knowing so much about the industry. And also you have that nice little window of time where people like the younger people to come in into the industry, unfortunately. Um, so, oh, I've learned so much. The biggest thing I would say is just to keep going. I know it sounds so cliche, but there's, you're going to get a lot of no's. I mean, we've heard the, it's like the airplane air, the hostess when she goes by and asks you for coffee and she gets thousands of no's, but she keeps going and she keeps getting coffee to other people. So, and there's going to be people that say yes. So I kind of use that analogy of like, you're going to get a lot of no's. You're going to get a lot of knockbacks, but you just got to stand up and keep going. Cause like I said, the only time that you fail is if you just stop it, it takes that hard work and um, perseverance just to keep going. So I that's agree. kind of the advice I would give, I guess. I agree. Um, well, excellent, excellent point. And I'm sure um, people take heed to that. Like you don't yeah. need a major label. Right. You just kind of do it on, if you got the right people around you. Um, exactly. Networking is huge. Oh yeah. All right. Um, and so you're making a lot of connects in the, uh, in the industry? Yes. So um, my friend Casey, she's, um, she's been in the industry and she's met so many different bands. She used to go and she used to interview bands as well. And everybody loves her. And we call ourselves like the heat because we come in, it's just two girls, right? We're really young and uh, we like to meet new people and just, it's a wasted opportunity. I feel like if you're not, kind of pushing yourself onto other people and it kind of takes that and which has been really hard for me because I'm not like that at all even talking about myself now like it's still hard it's still weird for me and it's fun though so I don't know so that's kind of how we do that the networking part of it but I have her and my family they love talking about me my dad's my number one fan loves to talk all the time <laughs> okay um because you're um, kind of new in the business and you're just yes. kind of really getting started, are there any producers or artists that uh, you wouldn't mind working with um, going forward or later on down the line? Ooh, oh my gosh. I would love to collab with so many people. Hmm. Okay, can you give us one or two or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think somebody that's kind of I kind of like the underground people, so I don't know. Um, I mean, it would be very cool to do something with Alicia Keys. She's a huge person. Like Lady Gaga also really huge to me. If it was somebody a little bit smaller, maybe like Daniel Caesar, somebody like him, or Ari Lennox would be very cool. She's a beautiful singer. Okay. Uh, that would be a couple of my choices. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, those are great choices. Um, now tell people where they can reach out to you on uh, social media. Yeah, so everything is Callista Official. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then I have a website, which is just CallistaOfficial.com. 
and there's merch on there and there's tour dates on there whenever we open up and things like that. So that's where you can find me. And then I'm on all music platforms too, just under Callista. There's a couple other Callistas out there, but my picture pops up. So <laughs> why don't you spill your <laughs> version of Callista? Cause I, when I, yes. <laughs> It's so hard. Um, K A L Y S T A. Okay, that's Callista. And you said you have a <laughs> website, and then we'll post all your um, social media connections on our website too at bringbacksoulmusic.com. We actually had you cool. on um, our new music section for our website, and then your team said, "No, I'll take it down." I didn't even see that. Twenty ninth. It's not released yet. Oh, so. that's why I didn't. See it. Yeah, so we were so there for like a day, <laughs> and then your team said, "Well, let's take it off." But that's fine. We'll we'll repost oh. it again as we get closer to the. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, Callista, um, because of the pandemic, you, you had we spoke on it before. You said that you had some tour dates. Are you booking tour dates for twenty twenty one? So that's actually one of our goals is to um, do a tour, um, maybe even just starting in Michigan and heading south and hitting places in Detroit, Grand Rapids, East Lansing, those types of places. Um, I'd like to do some sort of tour, even if it's a little mini tour, um, and share my original music. So, yes. Are you looking for like a, maybe like a local Michigan yeah. tour? Uh, yeah, just like to get just to thing. get a feel for it. Unless something else comes up, and then obviously I'd take any opportunity to do something more outside of Michigan for sure. So yes. So anything else you want to add, Callista, before we uh before we end this uh end this show? Hmm. Keep a lookout for January 29th because it's gonna be it's gonna be big. And thank you so much again for having me. It was really nice meeting you, Todd. Oh, it was great meeting you too, and I'm glad you were able to um, sit in on a. At the time we're doing this is a Sunday morning, so. Yes, thank you. No, thank you for doing that too. It was very, very, very nice. Thank you. All right, and that's Callista, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Callista. You can find out more about Callista on her website at callistaofficial.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget to check out our new soul shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.